Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session, Bring Your Own Model to Data Cloud with Google Vertex AI. My name is Danielle Larigi. I am a senior developer advocate here at Salesforce, focusing on mostly the data cloud platform. And I have with me Christian Williams, principal architect at Google Cloud. Awesome. So you can follow me on Twitter using at Dan Larigi, and you can also follow me or yeah, follow me on LinkedIn as well. Um, that's where I post all of my technical blogs about anything that I'm working on with the Data Cloud Platform. And you can also follow Christian Williams as well on LinkedIn. Now, you're probably really, really familiar with this, the forward-looking statement. You might have seen it a few times here at TDX. It's basically saying to make all of your purchasing decisions based on what is available in the system today and not off of something that I say might be coming to the system. And you have an option to win a $5 Starbucks gift card by filling out this survey. I will say that I personally do read all of the surveys, so I really, really appreciate it if you fill it out. It helps me to get better as a speaker, and it also helps us to provide a better TDX experience for you all as well. And I first really, really want to say thank you because I know there was a crazy wild concert last night, Third Eye Blind. This is an early session for some people, so thank you for coming to this session and being here today. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So how does Data Cloud work? Well, Data Cloud allows you to ingest data from multiple source systems using several out-of-the-box connectors. We have a Salesforce CRM connector, Marketing Cloud connector, as well as Commerce Cloud connector. You can also bring in data via S3, Google Cloud Storage, as well as Microsoft Azure using a file-based approach. And we introduced a new way to bring in data using BYOL, which allows you to bring your own data lake doing a data share between Snowflake as well as Google BigQuery. We have a variety of SDKs uh, for both mobile and web. And all of that data comes into Data Cloud to provide a single source of truth about a particular customer. From there, you can do all types of activations, like Tableau analytics, segmentations, automations. And most importantly, the ability to use your Data Cloud data that's stored in your data lake for AI models, which is what we are going to show you today. How to use your data stored in your data lake in Data Cloud in a Google Vertex AI model. So we just released our new, our new model builder, which allows you to build no-code, low-code models, but also to bring in models from both Amazon SageMaker as well as Google Vertex AI. And we also uh, release the ability to bring in your own large language model as well from Databricks, OpenAI, and Azure OpenAI. So just looking a little bit at the bring your own model with the Google Vertex AI flow. So you're going to create a share, which is going to enable you to use the Data Cloud Python SDK and a Jupyter Notebook and Google Vertex AI. Uh, after you run the notebook, you will be able to create a model endpoint um, that you'll then be able to call to create inferences using your Data Cloud data that's stored in your data lake. Awesome. Thank you, Danielle. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Google portion of the architecture. What I'm showing you right now is the layout of Vertex AI. And Vertex AI is our end-to-end -end machine learning platform that you can utilize to explore the data, train a model, deploy a custom model, and monitor your model. And at the very high level, we integrated that with Data Cloud to essentially train a custom model. Now, the first thing that we do and that we will show in the demo today is the good old traditional Jupyter Notebook. We call it Workbench, which is essentially a managed environment that allows you to take snapshots of all the dependencies or collaborate with your fellow data scientists. What's really interesting in this use case is you can actually work on one notebook simultaneously. And you can also use different backend infrastructure to run that. So you can do exploratory analysis on small sets or can really beef up the machine to like a couple of GPUs and run actual really heavy duty training on that. Now what we show in the demo in a minute here is essentially a series of steps. And that may look very familiar to most of you. It's a traditional machine learning pipeline. Danielle will walk you through the use case of getting the data from Data Cloud, validating it, preparing it, 
and then we look into training the model. And I'll show you one really interesting capabilities, capability on Vertex AI, which is custom prediction routines. Because very often, for those of you that used machine learning before, the question that you might ask yourself is, where do I do the pre and post processing? Do I do it on the endpoint directly? Do I do it through an ETL script prior to running the inference? And we will explore it today. And then, of course, we do the evaluation, validation, and deployment of the actual model, which is then exposed as an endpoint in Data Cloud. I'd like to go into a little bit more detail on the custom prediction routine. So this is essentially a specific container that Vertex AI provides, where you can essentially inject your Python script to do pre-processing of the data coming in or post-processing. And in our use case, we use that to pin data, you know, uh, combine or convert data types prior to pushing it to the inference point and then summarizing the output. Because it's much easier to keep that logic on the endpoint. You don't need to do ETL prior to that. You can simply push the data to the endpoint directly from Data Cloud. And this is the final step. Again, this is just the um, conceptual right snapshot. This is what it looks like on Vertex AI when you deploy the endpoint, and then you have an HTTP endpoint that's accessible from Data Cloud. Now we're going to go to the demo, and I'll hand it back to Danielle, who will uh, introduce you to the data ingestion portion. So here we are in a Jupyter Notebook. Has anyone ever worked with Jupyter Labs or Jupyter Notebooks in the audience? Awesome. So we have some, some people that are already really comfortable with this. So you now have the ability to upload Jupyter Notebooks into Vertex AI you, with, uh, that, can, that can connect to your Salesforce Data Cloud and pull in data from Data Cloud. So we're just going to go a little bit down and then right there. So what you first have to do is you first have to create a connected app in Salesforce. Who here has created connected apps to bring in data or integrate with an app? Hi. OK, so you first have to create a connected app in Salesforce. Then you're going to enable OAuth and create your client ID in secret. And then you're going to store that client ID in secret in Secrets Manager within Google Cloud Storage. From there, we have a uh, Data Cloud Python connector that enables you to make the connection between Vertex AI and Salesforce Data Cloud. That connection then enables you to access Data Cloud's data lake, which has data lake objects and data model objects. You can see here uh, we, we have the ability to write a SQL query to fetch the data from one of our data lake objects to pull that data into our Jupyter Notebook to be able to use it as a training data set for our Vertex AI models. Now I'm going to pass it over to Christian. He's going to walk through you through more of the exploratory analysis that's happening in this notebook, as well as the, uh, how we're going to create the model endpoint and train the model. Awesome. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> so I'm just going to rush over that, because we're a little bit pressed for time. But for those of you that ran notebooks and did some data science before, that's just the classic exploratory analysis. This is where we look for missing values. Um, here we're looking at the standard deviations of the classes. right? because you want to make sure that the model that you use to train, or the data that you use to train the custom model doesn't have any bias and hasn't, doesn't have any strong categories. And then we also look into visualizing that. So we create a variety of histograms, again, looking at the different attributes. And by the way, this is a recommend, recommender example. So we are trying to do product recommendations based on customer data. And there's a little bit more, um, which I'm not going to go into detail to, just like histograms and class distributions. One thing that's interesting is this one. I'm sure many of you have seen it before, the good old classic confusion matrix, where we look into correlation between different features. And that's important for linear models, because they tend to get skewed if there's strong correlation. So we look at that as well. But at the very end, once we're done with that, we use scikit-learn in this toy example, right? to essentially perform hyperparameter optimization. We do some grid search on the best parameters for learning rate and so forth. And then finally, here at the very end, we get the actual artifacts, right? which is a model artifact, which is the model itself, the trained model, and the encoder portion, which is essentially a script that does the pre-encoding for us. Now going back to the previous notebook, um, just one second here. I have to open my second notebook. Apologies for that. So if I go back to here we are, because I zoomed in. Go back to the I think third, right there. Second tab. Sorry. Third notebook. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have the model now. We have the 
the actual train model file. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to actually deploy that to a container. And that's what I will show you now. So we now use our project in Google Cloud. We specify a couple of naming conventions. This is important because, as you recall, when we get to the final deployment, we need a container image. So we need to create a requirements file. This is where we specify what we use. So we use Fast API and UVCon for the HTTP server and a couple of libraries. This is the SDK for uh, Google Cloud for Vertex AI. This is the actual predictor file. So this is the Python file that would be injected into the container when we run the endpoint. And as you can see, it's comprised of loading the data, pre-processing the data. Remember when we talked about custom prediction routines and transforming of some of the input features. And what's really interesting here is we install all the requirements locally first from that requirements file. And we then get to, apologies for the scrolling, we then get to deploy it locally on the Jupyter Notebook. So what we do is we take the container, deploy it on the actual Jupyter Notebook, test it, make sure that you know, the input and output works as expected, and then deploy it to an actual Vertex AI endpoint. So this is what we're doing here, right? We create a request, a JSON file request, push it to the local endpoint, and then get the 200 response. And this is where we're at the point in the process where we trained a custom model, uh, deployed it in a local container on the Jupyter Notebook instance, tested it, made sure that the pre- and post-processing works, and now deploy it to the container registry and to an endpoint that's then available to Data Cloud. OK, and this is where I will hand it over again to Danielle, who will show you how to actually access that endpoint. So you saw all the cool stuff that you can do in Jupyter Lab within Google Vertex AI. Now we have a new Einstein Studio, which features our new model builder, which again allows you to build those no-code, low-code AI models, or pull in a pro-code model from either Vertex AI or SageMaker. So here we are in Data Cloud and that new model builder. And we'll just go over to the next tab. There we go. So here is the actual screen where you can create either uh, you can create that new AI model from scratch. Or here is also where you can also hook up that Vertex AI model. And on our third tab, we have our AI model that, uh, that Christian just showed you already hooked up, already making inferences. So you can see that our batch job already pulled in uh, 1 million inferences each time, making predictions uh, using the model that we just showed you in our Vertex AI model from our data cloud data that's stored in our data lake object. Really cool, right? Excited? <laughs> yeah, OK. Now I'm going to hold it. I'm going to send it back to uh, Christian, because he's going to show you all of the cool stuff that they're doing at Google with generative AI and their new large language model, Gemini. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. So everything that we talked about up to this point was predictive AI, right? Classic machine learning model. And I know we're all talking about generative AI these days. So I'd like to show you a sneak peek pertaining to one of our latest models. That's a multimodal model. So what does that mean? You can interact with that model beyond natural language. You can actually upload or ingest video, audio, pictures, and ask questions about it without any pre-processing. And this is what's shown here in this pre-recorded demo. I used the pre-recorded one because the processing time is a couple of minutes. As you can imagine, it's a fairly large data set. So what I'm showing you is we're ingesting a movie that's 44 minutes long or 700,000 tokens in terms of still frames to the language model. And what we can do now is we can ask questions about that movie in plain English without any pre-processing. So what we do here is we uploaded the movie and we ask a question about a specific scene. So we say, find a moment within that movie where a piece of paper is removed from a specific person's pocket. And then tell me what's on that piece of paper. So as you can see, it's sped up. It takes roughly a minute for that to process. But the generative AI, the large language model, is able to identify the time sequence 1201 where that specific event happens. And you can see we go to the actual video on the right-hand side and then go to that time code at 12 minutes. And now you'll see that's exactly where that specific action happens. And now it performs OCR on the fly for you. Right? It tells you exactly what's on there. So this is a, a, a pawnbroker's receipt from 1924 with a $4 value. The next step is, OK, I'd like to find a separate scene and I'd draw a picture. Find me the scene in that movie that relates to that specific picture that I just drew by hand. 
it can do that as well. It goes through all the 700,000 tokens and tells you at 1534, something appears that looks similar to the hand drawing that you just provided. And as you can see, this is pretty amazing because there's no pre-processing. We're not doing any indexing. We're not doing any sort of slicing and using you know, good old convolutional neural networks to embed all of this. It just happens automatically behind the scenes. And I just wanted to show that because it's the future capability that will also be made available um, by our partnership with Salesforce and specifically pointing to Data Cloud. Thanks again. I'll hand it back to Danielle. Awesome. So the reason why we're showing you this and the reason why this is important is because uh, also what just released in February with Model Builder is the bring your own large language model capability. So you can currently bring large language models from uh, OpenAI as well as Azure OpenAI. And we are working with Google on being able to hopefully pull in a large language model such as Gemini into Model Builder. All right. Now. Oh, let me exit here. I wouldn't leave you without resources. So uh, we have a GitHub here that walks you through uh, some sample use cases working with uh, AI. So if you can, if you want to scan that left. And on the right, we have a QR code where you can learn more about Gemini specifically. See some phones still up. And I just want to say once again, thank you for coming to this session. So uh, I will be speaking again at 9.30, uh, how to integrate data cloud with MuleSoft right here uh, with my fellow developer advocate from MuleSoft right here on this stage at 9.30. So if you want to learn how to integrate MuleSoft with data cloud. Also, I will be doing a deeper dive into the model builder specifically in a breakout session at 3 o'clock this afternoon, if, so if you want to look up that. And I will also be doing a deeper dive, in, dive into data cloud or data cloud for developers, where we will be showing all the developer capabilities of the data cloud platform specifically as well this afternoon. So take a look at the, your agendas and your sessions and come to some more of my sessions this afternoon. And I want to give a big thank you to Christian for coming from LA, right? Yes, yes. But he is here on his happy PTO. His mom is visiting. <laughs> so I'm really, really happy that he was able to make it. So first time at TDX? Yeah, first time. First time at TDX and first time speaking at TDX. Pretty right? much, yes, yes. Yes, so give him a hand. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone.